Hey guys, welcome to another video on Pick Microcontroller Basics. What we're going to be looking at today is going to be the PWM module. What that stands for is Pulse Width Modulation. So basically we're going to be making a square wave today. This is going to be a prelude video into the uh, Pick Microcontroller video that we're going to be doing on music. Uh, since you've kind of, I don't know if you've seen my past video, uh, kind of my update, uh, my 1500 subscriber update, I told you about that we were going to be doing the same thing we did in the Arduino video about music. We're going to be doing uh, right here uh, with the uh, Pick Microcontrollers, show you kind of a cheaper uh, way of doing this. So, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to uh, use the PWM module because you can you can just you toggle a GPIO pin. It's just a lot of times there's a lot of lag on a uh, GPIO uh, pin since there's you know different registers and things that are associated with that. So you can actually get a lot of a lot of latency with it. And so and then depending on how the compiler uh, deals with uh, delay signals and the code and so on and so forth, you can actually accumulate a lot more delay than what you're really needing, especially when you're wanting to toggle something in the range of kilohertz and whatnot. Um, can be kind of a problem to do with GPIO. I know because I tried that first. <laughs> so it did not work. Anyway, um, or didn't work too well. So what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be utilizing the PWM module. Most all uh, microcontrollers usually have some form of a PWM module. As long as it has a compare module and a timer module, usually you can create a PWM wave with it. And usually they're set up specifically for PWMing. Now the chip that we're going to be looking at today is going to be the PIC. Uh, if my pen will work, PIC. 16F1938 chip. The reason I chose this one is this one has quite a bit of memory in it, um, as well as it's actually specifically got stuff that's specifically designed for PWM. Uh, this chip can also be used to run H-Bridge uh, controllers, which uh, those of you that don't know what that is, inside of a power inverter. So the thing that you can buy in the store that plug is, it plugs into your cigarette lighter in your car and gives you AC power, it has an H-Bridge in it. An H-bridge is basically a uh, way of creating AC current uh, by bouncing different types of PWM waves off of an inductor and then using the inductive uh, overspike or basically the flyback of the inductor to create the voltage. So now, what we're going to be doing, that's exactly what this chip was designed for. So basically, it's a good PWM chip. So what we're going to be doing, let me get rid of that. How this is going to more or less work, I chose to do this uh, kind of like iPad type tutorial thing here uh, because kind of wanted to show you a little bit of the calculating that we are going to be doing. So anyway, how this basically works functionally as a block diagram is you have your main clock, which is your FOSC. Oops, helps if I get the actual pin. So your FOSC clock is your main oscillator. So that's basically that XTAL that you set in uh, programmatically, which we'll look at the software here in a minute, so this will all make sense. But basically you'll set that uh, crystal inside and then set your uh, config register fuse or config register or fuse, whichever compiler you're using. But basically set that configuration bit to internal oscillator and then you set the internal oscillator value, which uh, let's say in this case, the FOSC is going to equal one megahertz. Okay, so that's gonna equal one megahertz. Well, since uh, most of these PIC microcontrollers uh, use basically a four instructions per cycle set, which means it will do, it will process four uh, instructions in one clock cycle. So you will need to divide by four when you're calculating your timers and the timing and everything that goes along with that. What that goes to then is that then feeds into one of our timer modules. And the timer module is an 8-bit timer, at least on this chip. You can find other chips that are higher, 16 and so on and so forth. But this one is an 8-bit. So this is 8-bit. I don't know why I drew that that way. It just felt like it. Anyway, 8-bit uh, is what this timer is. So you basically have from 0 to, well, really from 1 to 255 is what you're going to have. So basically you have 256. Well, it counts from 0, so it's 0 to 256. 255 uh, is what you're going to have. Sorry about that. It's late at night. I'm not thinking. Anyway, 
you'll have that much of a resolution for the timer. Now, it has pre-scalers and post-scalers and all that fun stuff, and that's what we'll be getting into later. But basic functionality of this is the timer starts counting up. There's a compare module right here that compares the timer's register with a compare register is what it's called. This is basically a period register that is located uh, with the timer or with the comparator, sorry. The compare mod module will then, when the timer gets to a certain value, it will compare it to the PRX or the period register, and then it will generate a pulse here. Now, you can set the polarity of that pulse, which we'll see later. You can have it generate an active low or an active high, depending on when you hit that point. So that's basically how you will set the period of your waveform. Now, let's take a look at uh, PWM waveforms in general. See if I can get another page. Oh my lord, we got too many pages. I'm just using my fingers. Okay, so when you look at a PWM wave, you've basically got, let's say we start here and we go up and then we go down and we go up and we go down. Okay, let's look at a two pulse PWM wave. So this is basically our five volts or you can call it active high, whichever way you want to look at it. So basically you have the period of the waveform just from here to here is our period this is the period which is the way that you can take it and go from uh, when it goes from high to low and then back to high that's going to be the period of your waveform okay so then we also have the uh, so is the pulse width of the wave okay so that's your pulse width. And then depending on the pulse width, the ratio of the on time, which will just, this is also can be called, uh, let's see. This also be called the T on, the time on, versus the T off. The ratio of that is called your duty cycle. So those of you that if you've ever seen uh, welders or other different things that will say it's so, so many percent duty cycle, 50% duty cycle, 25% duty cycles, so on and so forth. It's talking about this ratio, ratio of T on to T off. Hopefully I think I got that the right direction. That is going to be your percent duty cycle. Okay, so. If you have 50% duty cycle, that means it is going to be on for the same length of time that it is off. So if your period is, let's say, 2 milliseconds, then to get a duty cycle of 50%, you will need it to be 1 millisecond on and 1 millisecond off. Basically half, so 50% of the period. So, make sense so far? Okay. All right. So now, here's where it gets interesting. We're going to be looking at the math behind all of this, and to be quite honest, I haven't figured out some parts of this yet. It has, has kind of eluded me. But at the same time, um, I figured out what works, and that's kind of what all, all that matters. So anyway, the main thing that you have to do is you have to calculate your period. So basically, like we, we said back here, um, we had this, this part right here, the period. We got to calculate that. That is what everything hinges off of, which is also, if we go back one more, is this PRX uh, number. So it's our period number for of our uh, compare register. So that's the main thing that we want to look at. So in order to calculate that from the data sheet, this is from section 23.3.4. Of the data sheet section is where I'm getting this information. All right, they say that our PWM period, so I'm just gonna say period, is equal to now. Here's where it gets crazy this is that PRX number, so an X stands for whichever uh, module you're using. So there's like, there's like, like I said, for this one, it's like got four different PWMs or something like that or three different ones or something so there's one two and three so you know whichever one you're picking that's what you put in for the for the X here but we're doing that it's plus one let's get rid of that 
that's plus one. So then you add one to that number. And this number, by the way, is in bits. Okay, so that number is in bits. So those will be whole integer values. Okay, and then it's times four, since there's four instructions per clock cycle. Then it's times our TOSC, which is the time of our oscillations, which basically is the uh, actual time, like seconds, of our main clock, which, uh, those of you that don't know, one over in anything that you do, in, in electronics, one over the frequency will be the time. Same thing as one over the time will equal the frequency. That's just one of those givens, for those of you that don't know. So basically, one over FOSC will give us the time in seconds, whoa, hello there, in seconds, it will give us the time in seconds, okay? So it'll probably be in milliseconds. Like if it's one megahertz, then that's gonna be one microsecond, okay? Because it'll be one over a million, which is 0 .000001, which again is one megahertz is equal to, you know, one times 10 to the minus six, which is a microsecond, okay? So that's what that is. So now knowing that, knowing that our TOSC is equal to one, so it's basically gonna be one times one over FOSC, okay? Is what that's gonna be. I'm going to delete this, and then I'm gonna move this. Let's see if I can't move this over a little bit. Whoa, too far. Give me a little bit more room. Get all that off of there. Okay. And then that's going to be then times our prescale. So I'm just going to say pre. That's going to be times our prescale value. Okay. That you set up in your timer module. What's your timer module? At least I think for this one, I believe the prescale options are 1 to 1, 1 to 4, uh, 1 to 16, and 1 to 64, I think, is your prescale options. Basically, what it's doing is it'll divide the clock by 16, divided by 4, divided by 64, depending on what you want to do. You can basically, you know, you can scale it around. So if you want to know more about timers and how they work, I think I, I do have videos. No, I know I do. I got some videos that I did of timers um, you can check out uh, on my channel. <clears throat> but anyway, for this guy, that's the way this is going to. So what we need to do is we need to solve for that piece because that's what we need to know. Usually you'll pick your period, you know what it is. You want a one kilohertz waveform or a, you know, I don't know, 3.2 kilohertz waveform or something. So we need to know this piece, okay? So in order to solve for this, I'm going to I'm not going to watch you pain or have you guys painfully watch me go through this. What I found is the PRX is going to equal my iPad will sense my pen. Um, your F O S C, okay, divided by four times your prescale, just call it pre, your prescale times the frequency of your P W M. Oh, no, hopefully, this comes across P W M, okay, it's gonna be times all that put that in parentheses, then that whole thing minus one, okay? And then of course you're gonna round up because you'll get some decimals, you know, and well, and honestly it's up to you. You can round up or round down, whatever you wanna do. I usually round up, but uh, you know, you'll get, some, you'll get some decimal numbers when you do this. However, here is one squirrely thing that I have found, and like I said, though I'm opening this up for any of you guys. If you guys know why this is, by all means, I am all ears. I have actually pounded my head against the wall for many hours trying to figure out why this is the way it is. And what I found is that this whole thing is also divided by two. So whatever number you get up top out of that whole thing, that FOSC by four by PRE times, you know, the frequency you want and then minus one, you have to divide that by two. Otherwise, you absolutely will not, you will get double uh, what you want, essentially. And so I'm still trying to figure out that out. And and also, no, I've checked. This thing does have a post scaler, but no, I've set the post scale to one to one. So it should not be scaling it anymore once it's 
finish, so I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Hey, like I said, if you guys know what's going on, maybe there's a bit somewhere that I need to set that I haven't read about. I don't know. I've torn this data sheet up and can't find it. So anyway, for all intents and purposes, this is what I'm going to do for now so if those of you find a better way by all means share it put it in the comments below and 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 sh and share because i would love to know i normally would probably post this on oh microchips website or something or ask somebody else or whatever and work on it but you know what i really just don't have the time to be messing with that right now and i want to get these videos out for you guys so if one of you guys know how to do it by all means or know what's going on why i why you have to divide by two here by all means, post it in the comments. We all would love to, I know I would love to know. <laughs> but other than that, if you divide by two, you're going to get the uh, the correct values that you're looking for. Now, your frequency ranges, you may have to change the scales, you know, the prescalers, um, to get different frequency ranges because, you know, you only have 256 uh, ticks, basically, of your timer module. So you can only get, you know, a finite amount of resolution you can only go so far and so what you do is is to go farther like if you want to go you let's say you run out of resolution at 1.2 kilohertz and you want to go up to 4.5 kilohertz well you can just change the prescaler and it'll move on and we'll see that when we look at the code but um sorry that this is kind of kind of cut and dry and kind of rough but uh like i said i wanted to just kind of get this out but more or less, here's uh, this is basically the math side of it. Once you get this, uh, everything else is pretty straightforward. Um, I'll show you here. Let me turn the page to figure out your duty cycle, which will help you set um, your pulse width. Um, which is uh, spread across a couple of registers. And like I said, I'll, when I go into the code portion of this, I'll actually pull out the data sheet and show you where I'm getting this stuff. I just wanted to show you kind of the upfront math, kind of where it's all coming from. But um, you'll program a register bas basically with your, your pulse width. And how you get that is easy enough. You're just going to take, I'm, I'm, you know what, this is so easy, I'm not going to show you. You're going to take this number, this PRX number, and just divide it by two. And when you do that, then that'll be, if, if you want 50%, like I said, your 50% duty cycle, you'll basically take this, whatever this is, and uh, basically multiply it by your duty cycle. And then, of course, you'll have to probably do some rounding. But if you just want 50%, which is all that I'm going for, especially for this music stuff, 50% um, is fine. You know, but if you're doing LEDs or something, you'll want to play with that, you know, uh, play with that number and move it up and down. Because if you're wanting to dim LEDs, um, you can do that. And we may go ahead and I may, I may do that. I may tack that on to the end of this video. If I don't tack it on to the end of this video series, then I'll, uh, I may make a separate one about how to dim, uh, LEDs with using PWM modules. But basically, um, the duty cycle is basically telling you how much power you're putting to the LED 50% or 20% or 10% or whatever, you know, um, because it's messing with how long it's on. Um, so, you know, the PWM, how, how wide the on time is versus the off time so obviously the shorter it's on and the longer it's off it's going to be dimmer and the longer it's on the shorter it's off it's going to be brighter so you know you get the gist of it but i may tack that onto this video if not i may make a separate video just depends on how time goes i don't want this to get huge so anyway um that's pretty much all there is to the math side of it i'll come back with the uh with the code side and the data sheet so stay tuned